the eyes. Here you can see the figure one, what it explains. Which eye is abnormal? You can look it, you can identify, and what is the abnormality for less. Then the name the cranial now involved, and the name the muscle supplied by that cranial. cranial. Now we'll see one by one. The extraocular muscles, today we're going to study. Oculus means eye. The, there will be four recti and two oblique muscles. The superior rectus, inferior rectus, medial rectus, lateral rectus, superior oblique and inferior oblique. The levator palpebra superioris is additional. You can find your eyes, you can palpate even your eyes right now. And the upper eyelid, the lower eyelid, and the upper eyelid, we are elevating it. So because of the elevator palpebra superioris. And the remaining eyes movements, the movement of our eyeball is because of the skeletal muscles, which are called as a recti. Rectus means straight, then the oblique means as usual oblique. So here we can see first the levator palpebra superioris muscle, the origin under surface of the lesser wing of the sphenoid wound from above optic canal. This is how we can locate the levator palpebra superioris. Then the insertion over the skin of upper eyelids, you can palpate even in your eye. Then anterior surface of superior torsus, and it's called as Muller's muscle, superior tarsal muscle, and the superior conjunctival for fornix. This is called as levator, means elevation, levator palpebrae superioris. Here you can see the levator palpebrae superioris. This is how it's going towards the tarsal plates, the red color box, superior tarsal muscle. And from the optic canal, you can see this is called as levator palpebrae superioris. And the Muller's muscle, here we call a small portion of the muscle. This towards the tarsal blade is called as Muller's muscle, the levator palpebrae. Then the now supply and actions. You can see the oculomotor now, it's getting now supply from, and it elevates the upper eyelid. And the paralysis leads to the ptosis. The first diagram, you can match this one. The injuries to the elevated palpebrae superioris. This condition is called as paralysis of this elevated palpebrae superioris, called as ptosis. Then the optical axis, you can see, and the axis of gauge, direction of sight, primary position of eye, and the axis of movements also we can observe, the axis of muscles also we can observe. This is how the axis passes through the eyeball. If you consider it as a ball, these are the axis, anterior, posterior, uh, bilaterally and vertically, medial, lateral and all. The movements of eye wall, the elevation, just elevating, then adduction towards the medial angle, in torsion towards the medial angle again, the depression below and abduction away from the medial uh, angle, then extortion, just lateral, lateral location. Then the elevation and depression is because of uh, uh, this is around the transverse axis and abduction and reduction are around the vertical axis and the intorsion and extorsion are around the anterior posterior axis. And the rule is for recti and oblique, any muscle inserting medial to vertical axis, adduction and lateral to vertical axis, abduction, superior to anterior posterior axis, intorsion and inferior to anterior posterior axis extorsion. For muscle inserting in front of the equator, that is recti, above transverse axis, elevation, below transverse axis, depression. I repeat, the medial to the vertical axis, adduction, lateral to the vertical axis, abduction, superior to anterior posterior axis, intorsion, inferior to anterior posterior axis, extorsion. Muscle inserting in front of equator, that is recti, above transverse axis, elevation, below transverse axis, depression. Origin of the four recti muscles, common tendinous ring, annulus ring of the zin, commonly taking origin. The lateral rectus by two heads, extra head from the adjoining greater ring of the sphenoid. Here we can look at the four recti muscle, superior rectus muscle, and the medial rectus muscle, the lateral rectus muscle, and the inferior rectus muscle, four rectus muscles. They are taking origin from the common tendinous uh, ring, annulus ring of gin, we call it as. Lateral rectus by two heads, extra head from the adjoining greater ring of the sphenoid bone, it's taking origin. 
in the course of the four recti muscles you can see muscular cone like appearance you can see superior rectus muscle medial rectus muscle lateral rectus muscle and the inferior rectus muscle the rectus muscle length will be 40 millimeters and innervated from the intraconal side of the muscle belly at the junction of anterior two third and the posterior one third of the muscle and the insertion of the recti you can observe so ps is the tenon's capsule this is a course and this is how the levator palpebris superior is above and the superior rectus above medial rectus medial side lateral rectus lateral side inferior rectus in ps side just below it you can find the inferior oblique also this is sclera in front of the equator sclera is going to insert on the sclera in front of the equator you know the line connecting the insertion of the recti in the series is spiral and is known as the spiral line of a telox. The medial rectus is susceptible to injury during anterior segment procedures. You know, the axis of the recti muscle, medial and right recti in same horizontal plane, and the superior and inferior recti in same oblique plane, 25 degree lateral to the optical axis. And in the abducted eye, the axis coincide. Action of the recti, medial and lateral rectal lie in the same horizontal plane. Medial rectus adduction and along with the lateral rectus, lateral rectus adduction, abduction. The superior rectus around the transverse axis rotates the eyeball upwards, elevation we call it as around the vertical axis adduction and around the anterior posterior axis in torsion. Then inferior rectus around the transverse axis rotates the eyeball downwards, depression and around the vertical axis adduction, around the anterior posterior axis extorsion. The only in the abducted position of the eyeball, the visual axis coincides with the axis of superior and inferior recti. In abducted eye, superior rectus elevation only and inferior rectus depression only. The superior oblique muscle, body of is taking origin from the body of the sphenoid above and medial to the canal, winds around the trochlea at superior medial part of the orbit. There is a trochlea. Here we can locate the trochlea. Superior oblique muscle can be located. It's a functional origin also we can call it as and inserting over the behind the equator posterior superior quadrant here you can see just below the superior rectus then the only eye muscle innervated on the outer surface of the muscle belly the retrobulbar and string block can be given and the inferior oblique muscle you can see this is the inferior oblique muscle you can locate from the orbital surface of the maxilla it's taking origin from the maxilla this is the maxilla Passes backward and laterally below the inferior rectus. Insertion is behind the equator, parallel to superior oblique, posterior superior quadrant. Posterior superior quadrant. This is how it's going to posterior superior quadrant. Then the oblique muscle is always course below the corresponding vertical rectus muscle. Axis of the oblique muscles to be discussed. The oblique line lies in the same oblique plane, 50 d one degree medial to the optical axis. In the abducted eye, Adducted eye axis coincide with the optical axis. Adducted eye superior oblique around the anterior posterior axis in torsion, around the vertical axis abduction, around the transverse axis depression, inferior oblique extorsion, primary action, and additionally abduction and additionally elevation also. And the in adducted eye superior oblique and inferior oblique, so superior oblique depresses only, and in in adducted eye. Inferior oblique only elevation. The primary actions we can see medial rectus adduction only, lateral rectus abduction only. The secondary actions, the superior rectus elevation, inferior rectus depression, superior intorsion, superior oblique, inferior oblique extorsion. That is significant and primary actions are clear. Whereas the secondary actions of superior rectus intorsion and tertiary action adduction, inferior rectus secondary action extorsion, tertiary. Inferior rectus, tertiary action, adduction, superior oblique depression, additionally, superior oblique additional abduction, inferior oblique elevation and abduction additionally. So now supply of extraocular muscles, superior division of oculomotor now, supplies the levator palpebris superioris and superior rectus, inferior division supplies the medial rectus, inferior oblique, inferior rectus, and the trochlear now exclusively for the superior oblique now, muscle, and abduction abduc now exclusively for the lateral rectus muscle to remember the nerve supply except uh, two muscles that the superior oblique and lateral rectus muscle to remember that they would have a mnemonic called as SO4 LR6 SO4 LR6 you can practice for thrice 
you can remember it very easily so4 lr6 means superior so4 means superior oblique supplied by the fourth cranial nerve and lr6 lateral rectus muscle is supplied by the sixth cranial nerve that is abducens nerve so here you can see the oculomotor nerve how it is coming from the brain stem and how it is reaching its destination to supply the extraocular muscles and the ophthalmic artery is the main source of blood supply to the eye wall along with the optic now we can trace the ophthalmic artery which crosses even from the lateral side to medial side and divides into branches to supply the eye wall in the surroundings and the facial expansions are the ligaments check ligament you can see suspensory ligament and the check ligament in the medial rectus check ligament for the lateral rectus also and the clinical testings the muscle tested looks laterally and upwards superior rectus will be tested if the rectus to tested to look laterally and downwards lateral rectus to be tested look laterally to ask the patient for the subject middle rectus to be checked to look medially the inferior oblique to be checked medially and upwards superior oblique will be checked to look the patient or uh, subject to medial and downwards so now the first question answer is the oculomotor nerve palsy this is the same diagram which you had seen and the dosis the condition eye ball is turned down and out the ocular movements are restricted to be fixed and dilated loss of accommodation so injury to the third fourth and sixth cranial nerves leads to muscle paralysis and the unilateral paralysis produces the strabismus of the squint so you will need to find the squint and the diplopia also unilateral paralysis leads to diplopia double vision you can find this diagram it's looking double it is normal but if it is looking double to the abnormal personalities we call consider that condition as the diplopia abducens palsy internal squint and the external squint is by the middle rectus paralysis and the right eye is unable to adduct trochlear palsy eyeball turned upwards and inwards you can find this diagram pb eyeball is turned upwards and inwards that is because of trochlear nerve fourth cranial palsy so trochlear nerve palsy you can see even in this person also here affected eye rotated up and in so these are the various axes superior oblique muscle can be traced once again inferior oblique muscle can be traced superior oblique again inferior oblique the axis this is the various axis again this is what the diplopia and the testing of the muscles movements also have been discussed and this is about the extraocular muscles one second to have a look proper uh, observation of the muscles and the nerves trochlear nerve this is about the extraocular muscles once again i recall the extraocular muscles four rectus muscles superior oblique inferior oblique uh, and uh, four rectus muscles two oblique and four rectus so superior rectus inferior rectus medial rectus and lateral rectus along with the levator palpebral superioris and they are getting their nerve supply from the three nerves one is the third cranial nerve which is upper division and lower division the fourth cranial nerve the trochlear and the sixth cranial nerve abducens nerve so with this you can remember the mnemonic the to get understand the nerve supply of the extraocular muscles lo so4 lr6 so4 indicates superior oblique is supplied by the fourth cranial nerve and lr6 indicates the lateral rectus is supplied by the abducens nerve except these two and the remaining muscles are supplied by the third cranial nerve this is about the overall extraocular muscles you can refer various books for further understanding thank you very much